Ryan, thank you so much for, for agreeing to come onto my, my channel. It's, it's been a, a long time coming, as I said. I've been trying to get hold of you for quite a while. And um, anyway, um, let, let's get into it for the, for the benefit of, of my audience. Those that, that by some chance don't know who the ULA is or, the, or Hein Marx is, give us, tell us what is the ULA, who is the ULA for now, uh, as briefly as possible. The ULA is, a, is an organization that, um, well, basically it was formed later by amalgamating two organizations that were doing exactly the same thing. Um, I did it in South Africa and another a, a couple of people were doing it in America. And, well, then they contacted me and said that they are doing the same. I'll get to the do it now. But then we, de we decided, obviously, you know, put our our strengths and, and knowledge and power and everything together and, and work together. And from there, a lot of very good things happened. And this is where we are today. What are we doing? We are basically following international law and international law in terms of secession um, to sort the problem of South Africa, and I mean, I don't have to talk about the problem. The person in South Africa today that doesn't know or doesn't want to admit that we've got a massive problem in this country to sort that out. Now, the interesting thing is that the legal process that we are following also, of which is a very difficult part of it, uh, includes the exhaustion of all so-called internal yes. remedies, which means... We had to, and I say had to because that's history, we've done it, we had to go into um, every possible way, going to the court, which we've done, um, discussing and talking to the government, we spoke to Ramaphosa, um, and after that, you know, letters going both ways um, for so a they long time. Did, they did actually and, uh, acknowledge communication, they haven't just ignored you totally. Oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot okay. of communication. Uh, and at the end of the day, the, the proof of this so-called exhaustion of remedies is basically nothing else than that stack of letters, um, which to anybody that hasn't been to the negotiations with him, that hasn't been to, to talks and stuff and phone calls and stuff, um, there's enough proof in the letters to show that at the end of the day, the government does not want to sort the problem out. Why? Or how do they know it? Not because the government says, no, we don't want to sort it out because of the sidestepping all the time. And luckily for us, in law, even more so in international law, by just ignoring actions from our side, for instance, you are doing nothing else than admitting yeah, sure. And... That, that has been proven, although there are people that think they are clever. We are very stupid. At least we don't think we are clever. But that think they're very clever and wants to tell the people that we haven't exhausted all internal remedies. But then again, I don't listen to people like that. I'd rather listen to our professional sure, legal team. Sure. Um, and in terms of the legal team and in terms of what we've done, all internal remedies have been exhausted. Why is that so important? Because secession, for the people that doesn't know, basically means to use the, the American term, is to take one country and make a two-state yes. solution of it. So you're cutting a country up into two parts. And uh, in order to do that, there are very strict rules and regulations in international law because they don't really want that to happen. That is why secession is written the way it was written, and that's why even that part of, of the law, which is very wide, to say that all internal remedies must be exhausted. Because if you ask um, 10 people what does all mean in this case, legal, legal people I'm talking about, then you'll get 15 different oh, answers from 10 people. Because all is a very wide um, word in this, especially in, yes. in the legal sense. So we, we've done that. We're there. So on the 17th of, of December 2017, 
I had a letter delivered by the Sheriff of the Court of Pretoria to the President, then it was still Zuma, to say, we now accept that all internal remedies have been exhausted. Okay. And therefore, we, uh, we will now start with our process of secession. Now, again, for the people that think they are so clever that are only playing politics, um, any person that understands very little about the law will also know that by getting an official letter like that as a last letter to say we now accept it, if the government does not accept that all internal remedies have been exhausted, then it's actually very simple. Then they've got to say, no, it's not been exhausted. They don't have to say what we've got to do. All they have to do is say, no, it's okay, not so been they exhausted. Haven't, they haven't done that. Which, which they haven't done. But then we went a step further. In February 2019, last year, we actually sent another letter to the president. Then it was Ramaphosa. And in that letter, the whole purpose of the letter, again, we don't make a, a secret of it, the purpose of the letter was to, to put everything in order, what we've done, what we wanted, what the response was, what they did not do, and we sent it to him, not in order for him to understand it, because he was physically part yes. of the negotiations, but in order for us to send that letter to the international community, which we've done, Trump, uh, Antonio Guterres, who's the Secretary General of the United Nations, and to many, many other embassies, to show to them, this is not only what we've done. There's your proof, international community. That's what we've done, but we've done, we, we actually went one step further. That letter was delivered to okay, Ramaphosa. Okay. No. So any person that says that all internal remedies have not been exhausted is actually, very good question, is actually doing what? Fighting against himself, against his own people. In this case, we're talking about yes. the minorities. What is the purpose of somebody doing that? Why would somebody not want, for lack of a better word, want all remedies yes. not to be exhausted? Why don't they want that? I'll tell you why. Because the personal gain is too high for those yeah, people. Yeah. Well, this, this leads me to my question. With, with all the, the politics involved, and mm. we have so-called opposition parties, um, and, and there is a so-called political solution I love, I love what you say, so-called, because at this stage it looks as if they all work yeah. with the ANC. This is my question you. regarding that. Why secession? Why not a political solution? Vote the ANC out, bring in somebody else. Why secession? I, I, I agree with, with, with Very, what you're doing. I, 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 it's my opinion that there is no political solution in this country. We have a problem that is not politically uh, uh, solvable and it's and it's not a, a a political party problem it's something else which we might get into just now. <laughs> might get might get me into trouble by, by it, mentioning it but yeah why a secession i don't know what at what a standard or grade the children now start to count one two three four five but if you can do basic basic calculus then you will understand that politics apart from the fact that politics have actually have us where we are, politics can't sort our problem out. Why? Because all minorities, all minorities in this country makes up only 17% yes. of the total. So if you get the total impossible right and you get it possible, then you have 17%. And what is 17% worth in the government. Absolutely zero. Zero for the cause and 100% for your pocket as that part. Yeah, it's, it's my opinion that all these all, the cause, all, the, all these, these opposition parties are there to draw a salary. I mean, they're not, they're not contributing to anything. They've been overrun absolutely. anyway. And don't make a mistake about the, the pension. Oh, remember, you've also got to resign in time to get, for instance, your minister yes. pension. Otherwise, you lose okay. it. So, so let's not forget yeah. the money. Oh, it's it's about, about the money. money. And, and 
you know, it's it, it's easy to say. I just wish these politicians will be will be honest, but that's like a square circle. Yes, that's impossible. They can't be honest. The blatant, blatant lies. For instance, take one much earlier, Ruth Meyer that said not long ago, oh, well, you know, we lie because we're politicians, it's <laughs> yes. acceptable. Yeah, no, look. Um... Well, sorry, it's not acceptable to me. Lying is never acceptable to me. And especially it's not acceptable to me when so many millions of people's lives and futures oh, like, yeah, are on absolutely. the line. Okay, there, there are, according to you, there are two ways we can achieve our independence. Can you elaborate on those two ways? Okay, well, put it this way. Um, at the end of the day, there's only one way, really, and that is to have, looking at the, at the solution of the problem, there's only one way, and that is to have yeah, sure. the two-state two solution for having... Achieving that. Um, but in this case, I can't use the word secession now because both yes. ways are not secession. But the two-state solution, yeah. put it that way. There are two ways of, of getting your two-state solution. Uh, the one is basically quite simple. Your de jure process, your legal process, the one that we are busy with, you've got to follow those rules, get, the, get, get everything that's required from you. And we've, we've basically done literally... And the moment I put a figure to it, then you get people that also, again, want to be very clever and say, but it can't be that exact <laughs> yes. figure that's irrelevant. We've got to call it 90% plus of the work okay. is done. And I must stress the fact that part of that um, is 100% linked to time because it's designed that it must take a long time yes. to do that. For instance to exhaust all internal remedies. Why? Because when secession was written, and even today, the idea is not that each and every group of people, because international law doesn't talk about Volker or Nazis or whatever, they talk about yes. a group of people. Uh, when you've got a, a tiff with your with, with your govern, a government, then you just secede. That's, that's not the idea. Now, obviously, it doesn't make sense. Otherwise, you'll sit with with millions of little yes. countries that, that, that can't be sustainable and will die of hunger. So it is designed like that that it must take a long time to get to the point where you can secede. And we are at the point now where we say we've done all those things that, that are required of us, but now we need the mandate of the people. Because this might come as a shock to people, but in terms of the international community, as we sit here tonight, and please, please people, don't fall off your chairs, we are all happy under the ANC. Why? Because they're being voted in yes. all the time. And then you'll hear the voices say, no, 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 but I didn't vote for them. Irrelevant. What the international community sees at this time is that the ANC is voted in every time. So that is the will of yes. the people. What we are now saying in terms of, of, of international law is that in terms of the will of the people, but now we're talking about the will of the people, the people here we've defined as the yes, yes. minorities. Who's the minority? In broader sense, it's basically all Europeans, all colored, um, indigenous, colored, Khoisan, Griqua, Nama, and Indians. Those are the minorities in South Africa. Why and how did we determine that? Because Ramaphosa was also the one that started talking about his people. He made a very, very clear distinction between his people and the rest. But then again, it goes much, much further than that. And we all know what B, 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 E, 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 E stands for. And the longer this goes on, they will just add more Bs and more Es to it. And in the process, there's more money to themselves and less to the minorities. People don't really see, apart from all the murders, how people are actually being economically oh, yes. murdered, because that's exactly what is going in the country. Place. And absolutely. And I mean, if, if, you, if you just look at, I don't want to use this last couple of months under this um, <laughs> eye blind so-called um, virus 
an example, but even before that, the reality is people are suffering more and more yes. and more and more. And the ANC, the 3rd of October 1994, yeah, 1994, they signed Article 1 of the International Covenant on Human and Political Rights as an agreement. Yeah, they signed it twice. <laughs> and, on the 10th, and on the 10th of December 1998, yes. they signed it again. But what does Article 1 say? It says, all people have got the right to self-determination, to sovereign self-determination. So with that in mind, then you go and look at the, the Constitution and you look at firstly Article 231 that says they must oblige all international agreements that they've signed. Well, they yes. signed that one twice. And if you want to take them to court on that, which we don't want to do, we don't have to. You can look at Article 233, which says, if your court can't make a decision, use international law as a standard. So, <laughs> we don't even have to go that route. A lot of people, they hammer on Article 235, which says we've got the right to yes. self-determination. Um, but you can't use that as a legal basis, quite simply because Article 235 is actually worthless in terms of getting your self-determination. What it does mean is that because of Article 235, it makes it very clear that in the Constitution, it is our right to yes, get it. Yes, I was just going to say that. You can't get it through Article yes, 235. Yes. Yeah. So, so, according to international law, there can't be one fixed, call it a recipe, for secession. I mean, you're talking about so many different countries, so many different peoples, there must be a guideline. There can't be a fixed, hard and fast rule of how you achieve this. So I know there are going to be people that say, but the rule book says, rule number so and so, you didn't abide by that rule. Is there such a thing? And there must be just a guideline of follow this process, surely. Let me tell you one thing. I'm a very stupid person, but I love to talk to somebody with insight. Because what you're saying is so true. It's logic. No one country is the same in the world. You can't work on exactly it's the impossible. same way. I mean, yes, you you've follow. Got different, different cultures, yeah, you different, follow different the economic rules. situations, different. Everything is different. Everything Absolutely. is different. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the whole point. You follow by the guidelines of the international law of secession. And it's very simple. You can do it. But there are certain things that you can't do exactly the way they want it as long as you are yeah. within the guidelines. But there has never been two countries, and I think it's 193 countries that have already seceded successful away from their so-called mother countries. Not one was the same as the other one. Not one. Now, another question that, that if you don't ask it, uh, people might, listeners might might think and ask it is, but yes, but how many of those countries have done it peacefully without a civil war or a war? But basically yeah. it is a civil war. And the question is very, very, very few. They were, but very few. They are normally... Um, There's going to be conflict. A kind of a... Of, 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 of an, arg um, um, Conflict. an argument, <laughs> uh, yeah. conflict, whatever, with it. In the, and then the question is, um, would you rather stay under this government that are openly, openly discriminating against us? Sounds interesting, eh? Discriminating against us, doesn't that sound familiar? They fought totally against that because they were discriminated yeah. against. Now they do it. Much worse, there were 11 apartheid laws before 1994. Now there's 114 Absolutely. reversed apartheid laws. And the question is, would you rather stay under them? Or would you then say, well, there's, a, there's literally a 100% chance of getting independence, even if it means that there will be conflict. Then I'm saying, I'd rather go for the conflict and get and get um, uh, a future, at least for my children and for my exactly. people, That's and what they I was, 
this is exactly children, what I was just sit, going to yeah, say. In my opinion, there's going to be conflict yeah. at some point in the near future anyway. Why, why not? But that's what they're yeah. asking. That's what they're asking. That's what they're saying. How many times have we heard? Show me the person in this country that has not heard how the whites will be slaughtered, how their children will be used as fertilizer, how our canaries yeah, our and budgies and whatever will be killed. The person that tells you hasn't heard it has been in a cave yeah. for many years. The thing is that they want to avoid or, or think they're going to avoid the conflict by not asking for independence and in that because, look, um, if we do go through the secession process, either way, um, we're going to have conflict anyway. We might as well fight for the right reason. We've got it in any case already. We, we've got oh, it yes. in, in, oh, in yes. any case already. Uh, and, and, and what is part of their strategy? Part of their strategy is to make people yes, scared. To say, we will kill you, slaughter you, use your babies as fertilizer, rape your woman, do whatever. And they think, well, and I'm sure there are people that will say, oh, please, just not that. Take yes. whatever you want to. I'm telling you, the majority of people will not accept it. I will never, definitely not accept it. And as far as I've got whatever small sphere of influence I've got, I will use that influence to say you will not accept to be basically scared yeah, yeah. into submission because that's what the trying thing is, to we, stage. We, we're sitting with a generation now that has grown up in an in a, in a environment where their, their, their freedoms have been taken away. You and I, I mean, I'm 52 now. We, we know what life can be like or what it should be like. They don't. And, you know, we've, I've got, got youngsters in the house here. For them, it's normal not to be able to go out of the gate because it's dangerous out there. But I see that as a, as a, as a restriction on my, my, my freedoms. I can't go out into the street unless I'm looking left and right before I open the gate and that kind of thing. It's normal to them. And and they want to and they, they all want to avoid conflict, but conflict is coming to them. They they're not going to go to it. It's coming to them, and they're not prepared for it. Can can I ask you? But see it as a rhetorical question. How many of the things that these people have said that they will do against us have they not oh, done they so far? I think I think war is about the, the uh, is about the the closest that yes. we can say they haven't done. Although a lot of people will actually argue we at that we it is already war. actually war. You know, yeah. So the reality is our people must open, start opening their eyes. They've got to wake up. The coffee is cold already. There is war I don't, I don't know if you follow my channel at all, but uh, a little while ago I did a video called When Are You Going to Start Believing What They Are Telling Us? You know? That's interesting that you say that. No, I haven't seen that specific one. But funny enough, that is one of the things that exactly those words I use. That's why yeah. I smiled when you said it. That I use in a lot of, of, of my speeches. I say, when are you people yeah. going to start believing what they say? Because so far they've basically done everything Absolutely. they said that they Absolutely. will do. And, and, and if you look at, for instance, the, the all the colored communities, they are... Bottomed yeah. out. They are so, so poor. They've been pushed out so bad. And they just don't stop. Yeah. This, this government doesn't stop um, just wanting more and more and more and more. They just don't have the, the common sense to realize that, that you can bankrupt anything in this world, even an entire country. country yeah. They have, they have made this country, to use Trump's word, a shithole yeah. country in a short time. And, well, you said you're 52. I'm, I'm, basic, I'm 60. So I've also seen that side of, of what things are better. Interesting if I say that, and I think of, of Helen Zeller, that when she said it, yes. so-called liberal, she was totally ostracized <laughs> yeah. by her own party. So you might say that it was better, or there were anything better before yes. 1994. Wow. Interesting, That's eh? terrible. <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually unbelievable how blind 
a lot of people are. But then I must tell you, one thing is for sure. And I, I've actually, for the last year or so, I started saying, God at work. Because God is opening a lot of people's eyes. People are waking up. They are waking up for, from this uh, induced yes. coma that they are in, which they've, I don't know if it's the government or they induced themselves, but they're waking up to the realities of what's happening. And this COVID nonsense have opened Absolutely. many, Absolutely. many people's eyes. Yeah. Okay, well, we've dealt with the de jure process. If that doesn't happen, because the, the de jure process... Sorry, you... In, uh, 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 yeah, sorry. The, that, that process is totally dependent on getting the people's mandate. And uh, yeah, the as far of as I'm concerned, yeah. Um, yeah. You, yeah. you guys had a very slow start to it, but it, it is, you are starting to gain traction now. I can see it. Um, I'm seeing the, the yeah. ULA all yeah. over much more often now. But um, in my opinion, it's not going to come in time for us. That's, that's just my opinion. I, I can't see it happening fast enough for... If, if I look at where we're going and, and you know, how this is going to end. Um, so what happens... Did that, sorry? So, so what sorry, happens... Sorry, sorry. Yeah. If, if no. the, my, my answer to you is... Yeah, you, 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 you asked me earlier and I actually didn't answer you no, on that. No I'm sorry about that. Um, two, the two ways. So my, my, my answer to you is it doesn't matter what I answer you, there will always be people, there will be people that find a fault with what I say or read something in it that I haven't said. So let me rather say this straight forward. Nothing meant in any other way than my words. We are going to have a civil war. Why? Because that's what they want. That's what they are doing all the time, chanting. They yeah. want a civil war. That's clear. Very clear. The reality is they don't even know that we will get the civil war in any case because they will start dying of hunger when this government runs yes. out of money. They don't get the SASA payments, the 18.2 million people that get SASA payments. Have you asked yourself the question, how many people, 18.2 million live off yes. of SASA grants? How many people actually really indirectly live off SASA grants? Oh, yes. Much more there's than 18.2 million. Each one. So, yeah. Absolutely. So, so the reality is, when the hunger starts kicking in, they are going to go into overdrive and in their typical fa fashion start burning and Destroying looting in everything. any case. And then you will see if the first looting will be stealing uh, TVs and, and, and radios and bullshit and we don't After even have power. Um, <laughs> but that, obviously the liquor stores as well. But the reality is... When a civil war breaks out, now what is a civil war? As a matter of interest, um, we had a meeting December last year, yeah, in my house in Artembos, and the United Nations guy was here as well. And somebody asked the question, um, how do you um, describe a civil war? When yeah, is it a, a civil question. war? And I, yeah, and I said, well, it is basically when your so-called security forces forces of a country and therefore the government yes. of a country, or actually other way around, the government of a country but therefore the security forces, does not have control over the people killing yes. each other anymore. And the United Nations guy sat back and he said, wow, Hein, that's actually a very simplified, very accurate way of describing it. I said, yeah, well, that's just my, my stupid way of describing it. He said, um, I agree with you, but I will come back to you officially if, if that is an, an official way of seeing it. And he actually came back to me and he said, yeah, totally, totally right. Yes. That's acceptable. But to go further, if a civil war breaks out in this country, that obviously then means there is no law anymore. It's yeah, a lawless control, place. Totally. That's a civil war. Then, and that's why I said right in the beginning, then you can't secede anymore because, because the de jure process is a specific route of getting the mandate, then having a referendum. So then you can't have a, have a referendum. It's obvious. How do you have a referendum no, in a civil war? Absolutely.
But then because of the, the legal route that we have already got on paper that we've done with all the communications with the international community, then you can do a, a, dec a, a, in the, a declaration of independence. Okay, you actually just answered my okay. next question. So you can't do a UDI unless you've actually started and gone through most of the process of the, of the, the legal process. You can't just say, we, we declaring independence out of the blue. We, we just declare, there's no basis for it. You can do it. Listen, you can do yeah. anything in the world. Because at the end of the day, either with a secession or UDI, your last, last, last thing that must happen in both cases is the international community must accept and acknowledge that you are now an independent country. And the reality is they will not accept it if you okay, haven't sure. followed All right. the legal route. But no, that, that answers that. So this answer that I, that I didn't answer earlier. There's the two ways. It's either UDI, then based on your your previous work for, uh, with the with the uh, secession work, or you follow the total de jure process, do the referendum, uh, and, and again, a lot of people say, well, then if you do the referendum and they don't want to give you a referendum because you can't do it yourself, obviously, well, well very interesting. Um, once you've got the mandate, and a mandate means 50% plus one of the group of people yes. that you've that you have um, in the fight, in the area, obviously. And in our case, it's two million people, voters. Remember, it's voters, not people, okay. it's voters, registered voters. Um, once you've got that mandate, then you go to the government, your government, and you then demand, in terms of international law, that they, they must organize a referendum. What are they going to do? They're going to Absolutely. ignore you. Then you go to them again, and you demand it again in terms of international law. And you can do that whatever, how many times you want to. My logic says for the international community uh, to accept that, that you've tried your best, you do yes. it three times. And if they, the last, the third time, if they ignore you, well, then you do a UDI again. Then you don't succeed, yes. you do a UDI. Obviously, you can't secede if you don't have a... Remember, secede goes with a referendum. Okay. But a UDI... It's just a... You do with a declaration. But, exactly. But, it's, but that declaration, you must have the mandate to do it because then you talk for the people. And this is where a lot of people have got the total misconception that it's only a political party that can do it. It's nonsense. That's total nonsense. Any organization with the mandate to... As long as, long as they're representing the people. Independence. Yeah, because remember one thing, a very interesting one. Um, if you want to, to you do a UDI, you can't also just go and do UDI as a political party. Because you've got, let's say, for instance, there is it, which we don't have, and I don't think we will, will have it. Let's say there's a political party that's got the mandate for the majority of the, the, the minorities. They, they, sorry, they don't have the mandate, sorry. They've got the, yes. the votes, not the mandate, because a mandate says specifically for, in this case, whatever, but in this case, for, yeah, to have a sovereign, for something and not sovereign some party or some. So you, you voted, exactly, you voted for a party and they've got the votes, in, let's say in this yes. case, two million votes. They can't go and do a UDI because who says that those two million people want yes. self-determination? So you need that specific mandate to say, click, I want self-determination. This is why um, we've done this on international rules and accepted norms and standards. People must say, I want self-determination. We're not asking anything else in that mandate. That's all. Yeah. Therefore, on the basis of that, you can do a union. Okay, let, let's just say by some miracle, the government, the ANC government, says, okay, here's your referendum. 
who gets to vote in that referendum? Now, I know you've got your, your area and you can get into uh, the specifics of your area and why you chose that area, um, but yeah. who in that area gets to vote? And the rest of the okay. country, for that matter. Let me ask no, let me answer that the first part, in any case, also because that it, it is something that people must understand. Why do we have the area that we have? Why did, did we indicate the borders where we've indicated it? Because our basis of our legal argument is where the minority is the majority. And that's based on voting districts. And in fact, in that letter on the, 90, uh, on the uh, February 2019, We've even indicated the voting districts by number. Okay? So, if you have the, 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 the voting districts, that's how we've determined. That's the area where the minorities form the majority. Okay. Then, your, then your question is, who may vote? Everybody in that voting district. Not the rest of the country. They've got nothing to do with it. Only the people in that area. Okay, so if we do have a referendum, it'll only be the people in that demarcated area that you have that you want to secede to yep. can vote in that area. So me living in Gauteng, um, who might just be outside of that area, um, I can't. I can't vote. Can't okay. vote. No. But the interesting thing is, again, another thing that's different from the rest of the world, although not totally different. Because Israel is a very good example. There are more Jews living outside of Israel yes. than in yes. Israel at this stage. Oh, well, it's actually always been like that. Which means, if, you've, if you have, um, in our case, determined the minorities, then you as part of that minority living outside of that area can bring your vote out in that mandate because you're part of that group of people why because how does that group of people get determined international law is very clear about it it says that there are four points that if you have one of those four points as a common denominator you can determine yourself as that group of people and the four points is ethnic language, culture, yes. and religion. Now, the interesting thing is, because we have included the colors, we can't use ethnicity. Sure. Obviously not. When you've got language, the reality is that in under the minorities, in, that includes you as well, but you are English-speaking. The reality is, under the minorities, 80% speak Afrikaans yes. in any case. So there's already... You only need one, but there's one okay. common denominator. But then you go to culture. That's enough, but that's fine. We go further in any case. Then you go to culture. What is the culture? Above 80% of the minorities have got Western culture. a Western yes. culture. That includes basically sure. all the colors. And then you've got religion. And again approximately 70-75%. Uh, yeah, Some people yes. say it's 80%. I'm not sure about that. Are Christians. Well, it's, more, it's more than half. It's a majority. So the reality is yeah. much more. The reality, exactly. The, but, but the reality is of the four denominators, three are applicable to, to them. Actually are applicable to form that so-called yes. group of people. Okay. And that's a very, very strong um, a psychological thing for the international yes. community. So it's not that, that we've decided some theoretical thing. Three of those things, we are the same. But the interesting thing is, especially in the 21st century, part of those groups <laughs> is also another ethnicity, other, another group. But remember one thing. What we are saying, because we don't want problems in future again what we're saying is that we want because that's also part of of, of um, international law on on secession you've got to indicate what kind yes. of government you have how are you going to run it and and we're saying we want a confederate system 
totally 100% confederate. Closest confederate system in the world today is the Swiss yes. Canton system. Swiss Canton system exists out of German, Span uh, uh, Italian, and, and French. And in Switzerland, they actually speak in those areas their three different languages. And are those are specific regions, different areas yes, yes. in Switzerland. In terms of the confederation that we want, we say, well, we're not, we're not displacing anybody because it's illegal in terms of international law to yes. displace anybody. But we do have an area where we can put the Griquas because it's been there for yep. hundreds of years. We do have an area where we can put the Namas. It's there. It's called Namakwaland. We do have a place where we can put the Khoisan, uh, although the Khoi in a big way is actually, um, they don't really exist anymore. It's more the sun, but the Khoi sun. That's why they now see them as well. Nowadays talk about the Khoi sun. Yeah, and that's Bushmanland. It's yeah. a massive area. So the reality is, it's there. If you then look at, at for instance, the, the uh, call it the eastern parts of the of the Karoo and even the the eastern Cape Marshall Bay, these areas that I live. Uh, there were no really, there weren't really yes. people here. So it's known fact. There's more than enough history books to prove that that these are areas that whites can can see as their area. But we're not displacing the people that live here, who we will displace. But it's not displace. Are the members of the majority group illegal, that are yeah. illegal in the area? And they will be sent well, back to where they come from. you won't be displacing them. You will be repatriating them. <laughs> you will be repatriating them yeah, back to exactly. their own country. Why? Because they have a Transkai already. They have a Zululand. They have a Venda, a Mpotswana, yes. call it whatever you want to. It's there. And then is the, the next question is, how many of the, those people that are here have got houses, officially, in those so-called homelands in any no, case? most of them. Yeah, exactly. No, normally December time, they all go home. They all go to their their families in in wherever they wherever they come from. Okay, so so getting back to the the Canton system now, as you say, there will be a place for for the the uh, um, the Namakwas, a place for the Bushmen, a place for the Coloureds and everybody else. But they won't be forced to live in those areas, surely. No, no, no. You can't force them. Um, but you don't have to, because they they have their so-called yes. homeland. As as much as as the the let's say for instance, you've got somebody that lives in Sunni, a, yes. a white person. Um, the ANC government can't force that person to go over to this new secession area as well. It's illegal. Yes. They may not do it. I mean, the the European that lives there and wants to live there is <laughs> bonkers yeah. in my eyes. But, I agree. But but. You can't be, they can't throw them out. It's just the same as today. The, the, the ANC and the EFF would rather murder us, but they can't throw us out. Yeah, Where are they going to no, throw sure. us to? It's illegal. Yeah, that, that's blatantly illegal. But It'll be but, international condemnation. But killing, is, killing us is easier. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's easier, but, it, but, but remember one thing. Um, that is also a way... Um, for our people to start waking up. Absolutely, absolutely. But it, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm one of these people that is, is um, on the ground. I'm, I'm involved on the ground and I've been out to uh, a land grab and all these kind of things. So I know, I know what's happening out there. And the, the people who are not exposed to this kind of thing really don't know that this is all happening. You know, they see it on the news and, oh, there was a farm attack here and there. But they don't realize that it's happening every day and the brutality that is happening it's just somebody died, you know. Shame, but they don't they don't realize how bad it yeah. really is, and um, bad it, it is bad. And 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 the other thing I actually told somebody yesterday as well. Um, the the sad thing is with this lockdown that we have, people don't realize where our economy is. Oh, it's oh no, we bottomed out. We are finished. It's gone because we haven't even started feeling. The effects of junk status, and people yeah. don't no, realize. Give it it. By the end of the year, we, I think people are going to 
The bubble before the end of the year. The bubble will burst. I am sure. I'm not predicting anything. Please, don't come back to me and say, I said before the end of the year. But my logic tells me, and I'm basically using figures here. Figures. One and one is two. Two and two is four. Simple. Math works. And in this case, this country cannot carry on. If you get 500 billion rand for relief, it disappears you steal in three months. It. What happens? Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Yeah. But you know what? Arrogance is absolutely an, a, such a serious illness. People yeah. don't realize it. They don't realize how arrogant they are. But, the, but what arrogance can cause, and, I, and 100% of the time, arrogance causes a, a, that, that there's a total, complete collapse of either the person or the country yeah, or the system. Yeah. Just getting back to the, 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 the different cantons again. If you've got, say now it's all set up and, and it's, it's going on and it's coming time for elections now, uh, elect the government or whatever. Um, if I am, I'm a white, but I'm living in, say, Griekenland. Um, do I get a vote in Griekenland, or does my vote count in in the homeland where I belong? Put it that way. Um, to be quite honest with you, I can tell you what I personally think that should happen, but that's for the new um, electoral committee or ministry or whatever to decide how exactly that will happen. But my my that's just my personal. Opinion. My personal opinion is that if we want to um, look into the future and not only look at, like the politicians are doing today, they only look at their own pockets, they don't, they don't care about tomorrow apart from their pensions. Um, if we want to see that there are not problems in at least a couple of generations, then we must try our best to get the Bushmen to the to their area, the the, the, the whites to their area, the Europeans, the Nama yes. to their area, without forcing them. And the reason why I say that is because I've experienced it practically myself. When I lived in Germany in the beginning of the 80s, 1980s, not the 1780s, <laughs> that was a different time. Then I lived, then I lived in South America. You were a little something. bit younger then. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was a different life then. That was a different life. Um, after the Second World War, Germany did not have enough men to do their work. So they imported a lot of Turks from, from Turkey to come and work in Germany. And one of the peaks that they got was to get a, a residency. So then in the late 70s, everything normalized again. And Germany didn't need those people anymore. And in, in, in that specific case, in Germany... The, the Turks did not really integrate into the German society. And if I say not really, they didn't integrate into the society okay. at all. So what Germ Germany did was, and it was totally acceptable, they offered the, the Turks that lived in Germany 20, I can't remember if it was, it was 20 or 25,000 Deutschmark to basically sign their citizenship. Uh, 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 um, permits, citizenship away, and go back okay. to Turkey. Many, I mean, I, I met many Turks that did it, and I, I've, I've, I've heard about many more that, that did it in any case. Because 25,000 or 20,000 Deutschmark in 1980 sure. was a lot of money. So they could literally go back to Germany after, I mean, to Turkey after working in Germany for many years and set up shop in whatever way in Turkey. So they did it. So what I'm saying, and this is just my personal opinion, um, the different, the different confederate states or cantons, whatever you call them, want to call them, uh, can have that incentive to say, well, you know, uh, you, Mr. Uh, uh, are farming in, let's say, for instance, in uh, Springbok, and you, you got the farm from your father, you got it from his grandfather, you got it from his grandfather, and we know it's a family thing, but you know what? We will buy your farm and we will pay you another incentive if you sell your property and you go yeah. to your area. If you do it, if you don't want to do it, you know, it's fine. Perhaps your sons will do it or your daughters or whatever, but 
give them an incentive to do it. Because in the process, as much as the, the left liberal world wanted integration, South Africa is a fantastic example yes. that it didn't work. The world is moving towards nationalism yeah. more and more. And nationalism doesn't mean anything else than be proud of who and what you are and be proud of your people. Why do I say people? Because that's what international law says, group of yes. people. Now, there's nothing wrong by doing it. And in the process, you can get the people that, that wants to go back, but the incentive isn't good enough for them to go back. And, you know, the reality is that at the end of the day, unfortunately, people are moved by incentives. And those incentives are 99.999%. Yeah, absolutely. So in that, in that sense, you can move people back and forth uh, to the areas where they belong. L let's take, for instance, the, the Bushmen. The, 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 the Europeans basically took the, the Bushmen's culture sure. away from them. They took their natural way of hunting and living totally mm. away from them. Is that right or wrong? Well, I can guarantee you if you ask the same question 50 years ago, even 30 years ago, everybody would have said, of course it's right. Because you Christianized them and you and you you gave them clothes and stuff. Is that right? Yes, it's right yeah. from your point of view. It's not Absolutely. right from their point of view. So if 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 somebody that works in a in in the Golden Acre seventeenth um, floor in Cape Town and he's a bushman decides, well, this that's that's it. I've had it. I'm going to the Kalahari and I'm putting on my springbok skin and I'm taking my bow and arrow and I'm going to live. The way my forefathers did, they must, must be able to do, right it. to do it. Yes. Some, yeah. At the moment, they may not do it, and they can't do it because they can they live like yes. that? They can't live like that. And this is the whole point. There, there is basically no culture anymore, other than the European yeah. culture. Not sure. We've taken it away. We like like that's fine. We must we must be able to live it. <laughs> the reality is in South Africa, we might not even. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, look, look. My my personal opinion is. But then again, I don't know how to bring the two together because I actually don't know what the ANC's culture is anymore. Because on the one hand, they hate Europeans. On the other hand, they love everything that the Europeans brought to them: cars, expensive clothes, uh, uh, cigarettes. Clothes, uh, expensive clothes. I saw the other day some of these buffoons have got thirty thousand rand oh, yeah. shoes on. I must get head rate before I before I pay that kind of money for that, shoes. That's what they live for. But then perhaps I've got a I've got a sense of value yeah, in life. I've 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 seen a, a, a must be a, a wife of a of a either somebody who works for the municipality or the education department or gov a government official's wife pull up at the filling station with a big Mercedes Benz and put in 10 rands of petrol. <laughs> you know, they, they've got to have the car. Yeah. Unbelievable. Now, look, Unbelievable. Getting back to the, the, the life inside the, the seceded country, if, if I was living in, say, Namakwaland and they wanted to vote on a an issue... Or any issue really, I wouldn't expect to have a vote in their area if if I lived there. And, and yeah, sorry, yeah, I, yeah. I never answered you on the question. So my suggestion, yeah, sorry about that. My suggestion would be, and I say again, that's not sure. for me to decide. Where am I to decide that? But my, I would say the logical thing would be to say if you are a Griqua and you stay in Namakoland, you can't vote. For them, because you are again the minority you can't decide there. for them. But have, you have yes. a homeland, and your homeland in this case is actually not very far away from where you live. So you you are registered in your homeland, and when there is an election, in whatever way, bring your vote out yes. in your area. Because why is there a homeland? Why is there a Griqua land or an Amako land? It's because of that so, specific so you culture. Yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Because at the end of the day, that's the old story. If if there are people, and I mean, America is a fantastic example today, uh, of which the worst example, worst in terms of it's actually the best, but the worst example is actually 
the United Kingdom. But in America, you've got people that are senators today that are in Congress that are not even from America. And now they want to start making laws of how the Americans must treat their, um, oh, yes. for instance, uh, people that come over the border, uh, uh, yeah. they're non-Americans. I mean, that doesn't make sense, which means the Americans doesn't have the say anymore. And, and the, the, this brings you to another, but that's a total other different conversation of uh, how genuinely true is democracy? What is the real value of so-called today's modern democracy? Yeah. Democracy only works for the majority. It doesn't work for the yeah, minority. Or it works in a totally homogeneous society. It, it, once you've yeah. got a, a yeah. mixed society, a democracy as, as we know it does, does not work. And we, we live in proof of it. It doesn't work. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, just look at just look at London. I don't even go to the whole situation of, of London of that that guy that Sadiq Khan that yes. became the mayor there. And and to him, um, that's fine. You know, um, whatever can happen in sure. London can happen. Uh, crime went up by I don't know how many trillion percent to exaggerate. And yeah. so what? Not yeah. a problem. No, they they <laughs> they they're getting um, not so much firearm. Uh, murders and stuff, but but knife killings are, are crazy in, in in the UK at the moment. It's like it's like we have yeah. uh, armed robberies. Yeah, it's it's everything with a with a knife there. Yeah. yeah, I've got a question for you that I know is a, is a, is a not a sore point, but it's a sensitive issue. Um, and let's just oh, say somehow we get this the secession right in time, and okay, we we're going to get the conflict and everything else that's coming, but. As you know, we have smaller groups like the Iranians, the Eurekas, the Khrundop, the Yusef. Um, what else is there? I think there's another one that I know of. Um, anyway, Eden, another one. All of these, I think, fall within the, 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 the area. What happens to all of these smaller groups? Yeah. Nothing. They stay where they are. If they still think it's... Um, there's any logic in, in having what they want, it's irrelevant. They so they won't it. be forced to abandon their projects, put it that way. Why? It's a, that, that you, you're actually using the right yes. word. It's a project. The, the unfortunate thing is that a lot of those people that are, in, that are involved and living in those areas um, think in some weird way that they've got independence. They've got absolutely no independence. They've got a false sense of security, but independence they don't have. No, they don't have, they don't have independence. Um, Look, but, uh, full disclosure, I... But the reality is they can carry yeah. on the way they carry on. I mean, they're not, they're not... That's the sad thing. They're not bothering anybody. I'm by Malema and these people because Malema doesn't like the people to be together. But the reality is they're not doing anybody harm. Why why yes, abandon yes. them or force them to to, to leave their, their project? No, as like as I was saying, uh, full disclosure, I am a or a member of USAF and I actually have a, a plot at the, the Del Barton area and I plan on, on building myself a small place there as a, as a call it an insurance policy. It's it's I know it's not totally secure, but it's more secure than I am here in Joburg. I, I don't want to get old in this place. This is a terrible place to live, as far as I'm concerned, you know. Yeah, yeah again, you know, it's a, a way you want to live in life is absolutely anybody's anybody's yeah. uh, decision and right. Um, so, so if we talk about that, you know, we talk about personal feelings, but uh, specifically what's going on in the, at the moment in, the, in, the, in this country, um, the logic yes. is for me, from my point of view, so I want to make sure that's only my point of view. But but I think it's it's ridiculous to stay in big cities like Johannesburg, for instance, at the moment, because things are going to get worse and worse. And the reality is, it's not worse. It is getting yes, worse and worse. It's, and not, worse. it's not just a story. It, it it is. I mean, I I'm yeah. I live yeah. it. I see it every day. You know, this. I mean, uh, uh, I saw today in the news some uh, a woman from Edenvale was hijacked and dragged behind her car. And she en she's ended ended up now in hospital. You know, um, I don't know how far they dragged her or how serious she is, but she's in hospital, being dragged behind a car. Uh, uh, and it's just another know, incident. These just another one. Even get get news coverage these days. Far murders. You don't even see them on in the yeah. newspapers or on TV anymore. On the news, not that I watch any TV, but um, yeah, it, they yeah. just 
get no coverage. Yeah, so... No, no, it's just another one. No, there's no... No end to us, and it definitely will not get better. Yeah. It's getting worse by the day. Tell me, Ayn, has there been any studies done? I know you've, you've, you, you, the, the ULA is not a, a, um, a political party. We know that. And you are, you are not, you are not yeah. pushing this so that you can become the government in, in the new area or anything like that. We no, know that. Um, has there been any kind of study yeah. done as to the feasibility, um, let's call it um, water-wise, electricity-wise, and all of that. Has there been studies done in that regard? Good question. I like the question. We are not only doing the legal side of the secession, but we are also following the whole legal process of what we've got to do. And part of that is you have got to have your studies available and you must make it known to the international community of how you're going to govern a country, how it will be governed, what you will do, how you will look at all the different aspects of life in that new, and the, that new country. For instance, water, electricity. Electricity is obviously a very major thing, quite simply because at this stage we've got a national electricity yes. grid. And then suddenly you are cut off from the so-called national grid and you've got your own grid. So electricity is something that we have been looking at for many years and we have got, as a matter of interest, one of the best, and I'm saying the best, electrical engineers in terms of energy in the world as part of our exco. So you, you actually have to... Who doesn't, not just electricity-wise, I mean, your process has to prove to the international community that what you are doing is feasible, not just that you want it. It's sustainable. It's feasible okay. and sustainable. It's, it's, to take a very simple example, you've got a farm of, um, let's say, a thousand hectares, and you've got two, two children, and you decide, okay, well, um, you give each child 500 yes. hectares. It's illegal in South Africa to subdivide a farm if both pieces are not sustainable. Sure. It's exactly the same principle okay. with a country. You've got to prove how will you be feasible and sustainable. And we've done that over and over. There is no question about it. Believe me, we've looked at much more than just water and electricity. Infrastructure, development, um, uh, foreign relations... We have not only looked, if I say looked, we've gone into it and we've given our reports to the international community. And Sounds we do like it all the time. Remember, international law <laughs> says you've got, oh, you don't understand how much work I'm has sure. gone in here. So I just laugh at these people um, and especially the politicians that want to um, belittle us to make us if we are fools. Because they're making fools of themselves with the people that know what's yes. going on. Because the work that was put into this is massive. I'm not talking about this. And it's massive. I'm sure. I'm sure. It's massive. And you've been going at it since because 2011, eh? The original process started 2011. And I got on into the process in 2014. Okay. So it's still it's a long time. It's many years of hard work. And you still run your own business and yep. everything else. I don't know how you do it. I'm, I'm luckily, and, and I mean it, thank God, I'm one of those people, the more work I get, the, the more effective I become. Unlike politicians, the more they get, the lazier they become. Yeah, no, that's true. And, and yeah. But then again, we don't know what we call work for a politician because they don't even know where to start with the word work. No, um, in terms of, 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 of being busy, I'm extremely busy. I've got, uh, at this stage, two uh, fairly big businesses to run. Um, and as I say, the, more, the busier I get, the more effective I oh, become. That's, that's, a, that's a rare quality, <laughs> I must admit. Yeah, it, it, yeah I, I happen to, 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 to thrive on 
Yeah. 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 I'm not a drinker, so so I don't know what I'm going to die of, but I'm perhaps there'll be a bullet um, by either either some of our politicians that wants me dead, and I'm talking about our people, or some of our groups that wants me dead because they don't want secession. It's it's easier for them to live under the ANC. You know, people. Interesting, and I've got to I've got to mention this as well. Um, literally 99% of all people that that hear and understand secession says there's no other way in the world. But then you get the very few that doesn't want secession. They don't support it. They say openly they don't support secession. And I'm talking about uh, yeah, there's there's lots of them. And I'm talking about very conservative yeah. people. And my question is, but if you don't support secession, the logic is then you support the ANC. Or they have an idea that there is another because solution. What is that? Well, what other solution? I've been involved in this for how many years? I was P.W. Water yeah. Secretary. We've discussed this. We talked about this how many times? In fact, he was the one that told me to, to look at the Canton system, look at a, a, a confederate yes. system start looking for solutions forget about the problem look at solutions and i can tell you i haven't found and haven't spoken to one person not once that came up with a different solution than secession there is no other solution being, being involved in on, on, on ground level, call it that, amongst uh, some of the, the civil defense or civil rights union, not civil rights, civil defense union uh, groups and that kind of thing for a little while now. I still run into a lot of people who have got this idea, you know, ons gaan skoonmaak tot by die evenaar, you know. I, how do you get it through to these people that it's just not going yeah. to happen? It, you know, it's going to take divine intervention for something like that to happen. The, the, I'm glad you mentioned it. I'm glad you mentioned that because those same are part of the less than one percent people that say I don't support secession, but they want to clean up to the to the equator. Uh, uh, yeah. um, equator. I said, and then, well, that's ours. Oh, really? So what do you call that? Well, then we won. I said, well, if you really want to win, then you've got to secede, or you've got to have a UDI. Because that is the reality. If you drive from Marshall Bay to George with a car, with a bicycle, with with a one bucky, whatever you want to, and you arrive there, you can only call it drive. You can't say you flew yes. because you didn't. You can't say you walked because you didn't. You call it drive. That is what it is. If you want to be on your own. It's called secession or unilateral declaration of independence, which is a part of yeah. secession. And this is the times that I actually sometimes just go and sit and think, what is going on? Doesn't the people really have the intelligence to understand? Yeah. You can fight as much as you want. You know how many times I've told people in open discussions in open meetings. So you want to fight? Fine. I'll even fight with you. When are you going to stop fighting? Oh no, when we won. Fine. And then? Then we've got what we wanted. No, you don't. You don't have what you wanted if you haven't successfully seceded. People don't understand the concept. But it's not that they don't understand it. They don't want to understand yeah. it. Because some thing, I don't know what, told them in their incredibly intelligent, developed, fantastic brains, secession is not a good yeah. thing. They, they don't want a piece of it. They want the they whole thing. They don't want to understand. There is no other way to be independent. There is no other. Th that's a word. It's a yes. legal term. I know it's, 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 it's totally below those people to understand such stupid arguments, but it's a legal term to have independence, and it's called yeah, secession. Yeah. You know, look, I, I look at the situation here, yeah, and I've been involved in this in, in quite a while now. I was also at one point one of those that 
you know, I, I didn't pay attention. I was living my own life and I closed out everything else as long as I'm okay. And you can say, I woke up eventually yeah. and I said, you know, this, this is now unacceptable because I could see even living in a kind of isolation that my, my, my circle was getting smaller and smaller and smaller. You know, I, I look at the situation yeah. in the country and let's face it. I mean, we've got a population explosion happening. Um, all of the, all of the, 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 the informal settlements and, and whatever, squatter camps and whatever you'd like to call them, they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The pressure on us is getting more and more and more. These land grabs, we're not going to win. No, this is not for you. These are for the people that doesn't want to believe it. Show me one area where the squatter camps or the informal settlements, call them whatever you want to in this country, does not get bigger. No. And compare that to the growth of your formal settlements where people build houses according to the rules yeah. and regulations. There no, is no comparison. No, There's no comparison. Now, th th that's a different, different point of the problems. I had a meeting this afternoon because I'm, I'm busy with a, with a big development as well. And I just had to laugh with the ridiculous laws that I've got to abide by as yes. a developer. But when you grab land, there are no laws, then you can do yeah. it. So I said this afternoon, I said, uh, would you rather like me to do it myself, can't think, think that there's a difference, or get people to go onto my land, live there, then there's no laws, then I can do whatever I want to. But if I do it according to the law, then I've got to pay penalties, yes. and I may not do this, and I may not do that. Where is the justice in this absolute nonsense that's going on yeah. in this country? That's ridiculous. And the reality is, it's getting worse, it's, not better. There's no way that can get better. It's, it's impossible for it to get better. That, that's the problem. People don't understand. The population is growing so rapidly, and it's, it's got so big that the concentration in in the, the squatter camps and that can't really get higher, you know, uh, people per square meter. The only solution for it is for the squatter camps to grow. And that's how we're getting these land grabs, most of them, because there are, call it white people, um, not, not every case, but mostly white people who are owning f small farms or bigger farms who are now being encroached on. The, 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 the squatter camps have caught up to them. And there's, it's, like, it's like trying to stop yeah. the tide. You know, they're going to lose those farms eventually. It's, it's, it's inevitable. We can go and stand there and prevent them today maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. But, you know, the day is going to come where, sorry, you know, the tide is coming in. We can't stop it. And this is where, this is where I agree we with you. have to have, like I say, um, or like you are saying, secession is our only alternative where we can call the shots and say, like, this is it now. Go and do what you want on that side. Go and grow as much as you want. Multiply as much as you want. Have your laws or no laws if you want, like you're trying to have at the moment. Just leave us even better. Get rid of us yes. that are so bad. Let us. We are so bad. So here you've got the chance. Let us go, yeah. please. But then again, we're not asking to let you let them us go. We will do that on our own uh, in any case. I, I, I pity people who who get stuck on the wrong side of the line. I think they they're going to get the short end of the stick very quickly. You know, in in the case of of secession and that kind of thing. Oh, but don't, don't make a mistake, and I'm not making any secret of this. Our people is our people. And there's one country in this world, in fact, the other night with yes. Chris White, I mentioned the America. same thing. I took my hat off to America, where they will send their military in if politics doesn't work. If there's any injustice to an American yes. in another country. And in our case... I see exactly the same. Yeah. If you are going to be whatever, I don't even want to use the word, to our people, part of that, of our minorities, you're going to deal with an independent, strong, intelligent, 
new country. Yep. On your borders. And you can play. You can play whatever game you want to. I guarantee you, you're going to lose it. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I agree. But uh, I do think there are going to be casualties along the way. Um, but it's inevitable. There's going, there's, there's going to be oh, conflict. And... That's why I say, you know, the, the, the reality is we have casualties sure. now. And they're mounting and yeah. mounting and mounting. So what I'm saying is, let's get this, uh, you know, they want a civil war. Please, bring it on. Um, you know, we, we never want to hear it. We don't want to talk about it. I've decided let's, that's fine. I'm now accepting their charge. I'm accepting that. I, I have the same attitude. You know, I, I see it as every day more at least or what's the what's what's the murder rate today in, in South in South Africa? It's fifty odd people a day. But how many of those well, the official a year ago or two years ago was fifty seven yeah, per day. I don't know how many of those are white, but I look at it as every single day we're getting weaker. If if we're gonna have a civil war, or whatever, let's let's get it on. Let's just do it. You know, get it over with now. Because it's it's going to happen anyway, or we are just going to fizzle out and disappear. And I suppose that that's the idea: just keep whittling away at us until there's just nothing left. That that, that, that is part of the strategy, but that strategy is now suddenly yes, catching now, up to fast, them. Very fast. Very fast. I also look at I it's also look bite. at at people like myself. I was in the SADF. I went to the border. I've been under fire. I know what it's like, and I am. A, call it a trained soldier, although I'm 52 years old. I'm still fit and healthy, you know, but for how much longer? Once once I'm gone and the few people who came after me, uh, I mean, I, I left the border in 1987, and I think uh, in 1989 the last South Africans left there. So there's, after that, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, these youngsters of today, they think that they, they, they play Fortnite on, on, on the PlayStation, they think they're soldiers, you know. They, they have no idea. Uh, yeah. Do you realize the military um, collective um, insight and knowledge that we ex-guys have? It's massive. massive. Yeah. It's massive. It's massive. And then again, what, what's the difference between 52 and 72, for that matter, to transfer that, that knowledge? And I say specifically... 5272. Believe me, we don't have 20 years. Forget no, about no. it. Forget Absolutely about it. Not. And if I say we, I'm talking about this country. That includes the ANC. We don't have 20 years. In fact, we don't have yeah. two years. No, it's, it's the... the economy will fall. Yeah. There is no question that the economy will fall. We were downgraded to junk status in February this yes. year already. We haven't seen the effects of it yet because everything has been closed yeah. down. Now, I'm, I'm starting to run out of fingers now, counting the people that I know that have, that have lost their jobs over the last few months. You know, it's, it's almost daily now you're hearing of somebody who's lost their job. They, they're unemployed and, you know, what are they going to do now? And that's a valid question. What are all these people going to do? Hopefully they're going to see the light and, you know, I don't know. I can tell you, but I, will, I won't tell you because this will be a, pro, a public love yeah, talk. Uh, but yeah, I, I've had to survive. and I. You see, our biggest, our biggest problem at the moment is literally that, to yeah. get the word out. But, but, but I also want to make it, make it clear as well that you said we, 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 you know, we yeah. have a slow start and we are building up. We are, we've been busy with getting mandates for just over a year now, I think, and we're standing at I think about 330,000, somewhere around there. Um, at least um, we realize and we know that the mandates that we get must sure. be verified by an independent yeah. auditor, either from South Africa or internationally, when we secede, um, which is not the same that some other people can say that literally within two, three months, they get like 400,000 votes because nobody, nobody have to yeah, verify yeah. it. Quite simply, because if you're not busy with secession, but you say you're busy with secession, and you know you never have to verify it, you can bullshit yes. whatever you want yeah, to sure. in the meantime. Sure. Ryan, I don't have any more questions for you, actually. Is there anything else you would like to add to tell people? Um, there, there, there must be somebody on my channel that doesn't know who ULA is yet until now. So, floor is yours. Oh. 
Well, well, what I can say really is I really appreciate the invitation. Thank you. I, um, it, it's an honor for me because at the end of the day, it's, it's about getting the word out, the word out to our people that they realize as minorities, we have the right to self-determination. We have the right for success. That's why international law is there. Um, and all I can do is to beg the people to go to our website, www.ulacongress.com, and go and give your mandate. It doesn't cost money. We're not asking for your left leg or your right pinky or your wife or your dog or your cat. We just want your vote to say, yes, I want self-determination. That, in terms of international law, is all that's required. And that's all we're asking. I've had many people that... that, that told me, wow, it's fantastic what you do. Please, Hein, get us self-determination. Unfortunately, I can't get it. We can't get it. Yeah. The people must by giving the mandate. It's as simple yeah. as that. Something I've, something I've just Sorry? thought of now. As we stand right now, as you stand right now, with, what's it, about 16 17% of, of your, your mandate that you have, if, if civil war yeah. broke out yeah. tomorrow, you still have the right to declare UDI. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Why? Quite simply, because then the basis, remember our legal basis at the moment, is where the minorities form the majority using secession and following the rule. The moment that, that civil war breaks out, based on the legal process that we followed, based on the fact that we've actually already exhausted all internal remedies, and there's, there's, there are proven facts for that, not just one letter like some people think they are clever say, there's lots, believe me. And by the way, it's open for anybody to see. It's also an international um, requirement. Anybody must be able to see it. But the moment civil war breaks out, our legal basis is totally different. Then our legal basis become, we declare a unilateral declaration of independence based on our work up until now, but we now want to prevent further loss of life, prevent further destruction of infrastructure, prevent rape, murder, yes, whatever. The legal basis changes completely, but it's still going back on the process that you followed up until then. Because, obviously, you can't then say, well, now, because it's civil war, we want to declare a, a unilateral declaration of independence, but we must have a referendum. Yes. Two total different things. Secession, unilateral declaration of independence, total different things. For secession, you must have a referendum. Unilateral declaration of independence, the world must see why yes. you want to do it and in this case, the civil war, but then worked on the work that you've done as a basis, and then surely you can't say, okay, well, we'll carry on with the secession <laughs> after the civil war, because there might not be yeah. people and left. your work is done, basically. Your work is done. So it's, it's basically, it, The work is basically done. And, and the interesting thing is, after the UDI, after you've, you, have, you are basically on your own, you can still have a referendum if you want to. If people are unhappy to say, oh, no, 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 we want to be with the INC, then then it's a very, very simple question. Do you think most people, part of the minorities, want to be with the INC or want to be masters of their own country? Do you know, Logic. Uh, it absolutely amazes me, but you are still going to have people that will say, I'm staying. Oh, sure. No, no. There's always yeah, an exception yeah. to the rule, obviously. But I'm talking in about general, when you yes. talk about these kind of things, you talk about in general, yes. but the majority. Um, and, and this is the whole point. Um, the people that that will say, oh, no, no, I'm happy. Well, obviously, they're welcome to, to go to the, to the other side. We will even buy their yes. properties. They don't have to give it. We will buy their properties that they can go. They're welcome to go. They just may never yeah. come back again. <laughs> yeah. Hein, <laughs> thank you so much yeah. for coming or taking the time out tonight to, to talk to me. I know it's getting late now. And um, 
It's it's been an okay. absolute, absolute privilege to have you on. As I said, it's been a long time. I've been trying to organise this for quite a while, and uh, I'm really thankful that you that you've come on. And I'd like to have you on sometime in the future, maybe to talk progress or whatever. You know, if you've got something else, something Anytime. new to tell the people. Anytime. Um, I'm just another audience that we can get to, you know, and uh, somebody we can reach is twenty odd thousand people on my subscriber list. Hopefully, all twenty thousand of them see this and go. And those that haven't already, go and give their their vote. Like I've said many times, I I support, except for one, which I'm I'm not very happy with at the moment. I support all these secession movements. If if somebody is trying to get secession, I'll give them my vote. I mean, it costs me nothing. Somebody must get it right at some point, you know. Let me. Let, I want to make it very clear. Just remember one thing, and you don't have to take my word for it. You can basically just go and Google it. Why? Because that's part of of yes. secession law. The national community must know about it. And if the international community knows about it, Google will also know about it. There's no other organization in South Africa, not one, other than the ULA, that is officially not saying, physically doing the work for. Not yeah. One. No, uh, there are groups. Yeah, sure, they are. That, 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 that. that they're not saying they want to do it, but they're only doing it for the political gain of next year's municipal uh, election. But you know what? If they want to live with themselves by misleading their people, you know what? I don't have to deal with them. God will deal with them. Karma will deal with yeah, them. Yeah, the wheel turns, eh? By playing with people's lives yeah, here. No, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Hein, I'm going to let you go now. Um, go and enjoy your supper if you haven't eaten yet. <laughs> we we were expecting load shedding. We didn't know because we went to stage four quickly today. So we had an early supper. Yeah. So I'm ready to retire for the night now. And uh, yeah. I'm going. I'm, I'm going into a next meeting which started Whoa, eight minutes okay. ago. <laughs> Hein, thank you very much. I'm going to no do problem. a little bit of editing to this and take out the, the pieces where you froze up. <laughs> and uh, I will have this out probably tomorrow sometime. And I will definitely put the ULA's link underneath uh, the, in the description field. And let's see what, what uh, my subscribers can add to your mandate list. I hopefully get quite a bit. I really appreciate Thank it. You Thank so you much, very Ryan. much. No Anytime problem. Good again. night. Bye-bye. Eh?